In a recent review video for the Nick Collection 7, I said that negative control points have been removed. Well, I was wrong. What's been removed is the icon for adding the negative control point. In this video, I'll share two ways of adding negative control points in the Nick Collection 7. But first, we need to compare the Color Effects versions 6 and 7 to see what actually changed. Here you can see the cross processing filter used in both versions of the Nick Collection. In version 7, we can see the new polygonal and luminosity mask selection tools, whilst in version 6, we see only the positive and negative control points and control lines. If I edit an image using version 6 of Color Effects, when I apply a negative control point, it removes the effect from that area of the image. Negative control lines also work in the same way, but they are a different shape. Let's switch to Color Effects in the Nick Collection 7 now and apply the same filter. This time we don't have a negative control point we can use, but I want you to notice this opacity slider. This controls the opacity effect of the filter on the image. It's currently set at 100%, meaning the filter's effect is seen at full strength across the entire image. But if I reduce the opacity to 0%, it now removes the filter's effect. Let's reset the slider now because I want you to see what happens when I add a control point. I'll click on the control point icon and then on the area of the image that I want to apply the effect to. Now we only see the effect in the area selected by the control point. But notice what's happened to the filter's opacity slider. It's been reduced to 0% to hide the effect on the rest of the image. It's now only where I add the control points that we see the adjustment. And if we look at the control point in the local adjustment list, we see that actually has an opacity slider as well that's set to 100%. This controls the filter's visibility in the area selected by the control point. The reason that I'm stressing all of this is because it's how control points and negative control points work in the NIC collection. Let's say that we want to turn this control point from a positive into a negative control point. I can do that by moving the overall filter's opacity slider back to 100% so that we see its effect across the image. I can then move the control point's opacity slider to 0%. This means the filter's effect is then hidden from the area selected by the control point, but it's visible everywhere else in the image. If I add a further control point, I can also set that to 0% opacity to remove the effect from that area of the image. What you've just seen is how negative control points work in the NIC collection. All that happened in the previous version was that we used an icon to do this automatically. But there are a couple of other things that you need to know. First is that the negative control points weren't available in all applications in the NIC collection. You could only use them in NIC Define, Color Effects and NIC Sharpener applications. The method we've just looked at only works with these applications and it's a bit time consuming. While understanding how something works is helpful, it isn't that useful if it takes a lot of time. Which is where the second important thing that you need to know comes in. Shortly after I published my review video, someone at DxO contacted me. Nice review they said, but we haven't removed negative control points. It turns out that all I needed to do was hold down the Option key when adding a control point. Now I hadn't considered this because I've always used the Option key as a shortcut for duplicating a control point. Let's go back to Color Effects 7 now and I'll demonstrate how it works. If I hover my mouse over the control point icon, I now see a message saying that I can use the Option key to create a negative control point. If you're using a Windows PC, that's going to be your ALT key. When I hold down my OPTION key now, we see the mouse pointer change to indicate that it's a negative control point. I can then click to add the point and continue to click to add multiple negative control points. Best of all, this method works with the control lines and the new polygonal and luminosity mask tools. This is an extremely useful change that makes the software easy to use, providing you know about it. And as for the ability to duplicate a control point using the Option key, well, that's still here as well. If I hold down the Option key and then click and drag on an existing control point, I can duplicate it. 
If you'd like to know more about how the new polygonal and luminosity tools work, you can watch my review video in which I demonstrate them. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon for another video.